Breaking news, everyone! This sheet of paper is blank! In other news, in the last One Piece chapter, we have the confirmed Shodai Kotetsu, wielded by the Gorosei Samurai Gandhi. Wait, I'm sorry, no, no, that's not his actual name anymore. Let us call Samurai Gandhi by his real name, Ethan. All right, so Ethan was confirmed to have it. Uh, this is breaking news to really nobody. I mean, anybody that's been following One Piece for any certain amount of time. If you just picked up One Piece last week and just started reading it, it is, it's very clear that he had the Shodai Katetsu, right? I mean, like, who else would have had it, you know, if he didn't have it? That would have been an interesting twist in its own right. Turns out it's not the Shodai. And I don't know, the Straw Hats just go to Elbaf or something, and a random giant there was using it as a toothpick or something. I don't know, but um, no. So, first generation of the Kotetsu Blade, wielded by Ethan Baron Venus Juro. The second generation of the Kotetsu Blades is the Nidai, that is currently in the possession of Tenguyama Hitetsu, who coincidentally is the maker of the third generation Kotetsu Blade, the Sandai Kotetsu. Shown here, held together with Play-Doh, because uh, it's not the it's not the greatest of the blades you know they've really gone downhill after a while you know th this one's really it's it's yeah it's not great it's shoddy craftsmanship if nothing else right okay uh let me just bring this up right quick I i've mentioned this before um do you think it was a mistake to not have zoro get the need eye at wano like i don't know i still feel like he easily could have swapped one out for the other. I mean, I guess the Sandai would have had to get broken for that. Not necessarily. Uh, Zoro could have just been like, hey, that sword's a much better version of the sword I have now. Let's switch them out, right? You know, but, you know, it is kind of not exactly the way it is, like in Bleach, where, like, the swords have a personality and a soul, but kind of, you know, and it's like when the Yubashiri was destroyed, Zoro was understandably upset by that, and then he got the Shusui, and then he had to trade out the Shusui for the Enma, and you could tell, like, he really didn't want to do that at first. Like, he really chased, you know, um, uh, Gyukimaru down to get the Shusui, we back. And even after the whole thing with uh, Hiori, it was like, oh, I can give you an even better sword. Even then, Zoro was kind of like, ah, I really prefer my Shusui. I won that fair and square from the corpse of a reanimated sword god, and it's mine, damn it. And then you know, Hiori was like, well, wait, hold on a second. I didn't say the other sword I was going to give you. It's an Owazumono sword. My dad used it. It's called Edma. It's kind of a big deal. And Zoro was like, okay, fine. I guess, yeah, and it's a it's a national treasure of Wano to keep the Shusui here. I guess that was the reason Zoro decided to trade it off. I don't think Zoro would have immediately just like, well... Bye, Sandai Kitetsu, like, throws it in the trash and picks up the Nidai. Not, not throws it in the trash, but, like... The Sandai, maybe it's it's it had a couple of, uh, you know, it's tough battles ahead and everything like that. And maybe there was a moment where Tengu Yama or Sukiyaki could have witnessed Zoro using the Sandai. And it just like, there was that moment, actually. There was a moment where they were training and they were like, you know, he was like, oh, I made that sword. And it's impressive it made it this far. But, uh, you know, can I have it back? It is mine. I did make it. Uh, you know, I was wondering if I could have it back. And in exchange, I'll give you this fancy purple one. It's got this great lavender lavender finish, and it's way sharper. So, as it stands, the knee die is kind of just there in the story. It's not going to be relevant to anything important. So, there was a theory in the community for a long time. Zoro was going to upgrade Katetsu Blades. So, you know, like, he gets the knee die at Wano and then uses that to fight against Venus Joro. And by the way, the same exact thing could have happened. Like, he could have the knee die right now clash with uh, Ethan, and you could have still had the exchange in the last chapter of a Katetsu Blade. He's using one, and he's using one, too. What? You know, so, I don't know. I, I just feel like introduce the knee die and it doesn't really go anywhere, but it doesn't matter anyway. Zoro, Zoro could probably make the Sandai into a Kokuto, and then it can upgrade it from Wazumono to higher ranks, you know, certainly. Okay. So, um, yeah, we all kind of know the background stuff with the Kotetsu Blades. Uh, things I missed in the last chapter regarding this, though, is that it was, in fact, Zoro and Ethan at the same time when they were clashing, when Zoro was using
using Rashomon, and when Ethan was just using unnamed badass sword attack uh, to clash, you know, they were both at the same time like, oh, the other party is using a Katetsu blade. All right, so that's important to notice. They get blasted away by the shockwave. Jinbei catches Zoro. Ethan kind of tumbles backwards, but I'm sure he'll be fine. Uh, even if he breaks a leg or something, he could just heal it, so it's not a big deal. Now, uh, other thing that's a little weird in the last chapter uh, is that Ethan's sword changes design because it was, like, designed like a Katetsu blade for the longest time. They all have this very distinctive guard, and the Nidai has it, and the Sandai has it, and the Shodai has it. And even when Ethan transforms into his big skeleton centaur form, his yokai form, the Bokotsu, even when he transforms into that, the Shodai Katetsu stays the exact same, except it just gets bigger. You know, same guard, same hilt, same everything, right? Okay, and then he uses hockey, obviously, to make it a black sword, okay? And he uses that to slice apart the Pacifista Mark Threes. We see him using a giant version of the Shodai to slice apart the Labo phase. And then in last chapter only, the sword's design completely changes. The guard goes away, the hilt changes, and it now looks for more uh, like similar to a Shirasaya. A Shirasaya is like a sword that just has like, it's just a sword that has the wooden case. There's nothing fancy, there's no ornamental scabbard or anything like that. It's just a wooden case, very similar to uh, Fujitora's sword, Kaku's swords that he uses to fight Zoro back at Eni's lobby. I think Shirasaya just refers to the sword casing and uh, the actual name of the sword itself is a uh, Shiko Mizue, which is a prepared cane, just literally translated into Japanese. Uh, there's also Joto, which means staff sword, okay? So it's like a cane sword, right? Anyway, that's the, the point is, it changes into a completely different sword design in the span of one chapter. There's no explanation for this other than just maybe an error on Oda's part. However, I will say, while Oda has made mistakes before drawing various swords, I mean, there's a lot of swords and various weapons in One Piece, sometimes Oda will draw the wrong uh, scabbard for the wrong sword, or he'll sometimes mess up the guard. I know a few times, you know, Zoro will be using one of his swords, and maybe Oda will, you know, draw the Wado's guard on the Sandai, or, or something like that. Like, that's understandable. You know, Zoro's carrying three swords, sometimes Oda might mess up the guards or the design of the scabbard or something. But in the case with Ethan, it's a little weird because it's a completely different sword. It's not like Oda forgot to draw, you know, the, the, the design of the guard a little bit. No, he removed the guard completely and it's a different sword. So, I don't know. I, I have a feeling like this might actually be relevant. Like, you know, we're gonna find out in a moment here, like, why the sword changed. I guess we'll find out in the next chapter, because obviously if there was a mistake here, Oda would have noticed it, or some, one of his editors would have noticed it, and by the next chapter, if we see Ethan, it's either back to being the Shodai Katetsu, the way that we've seen him with it all this time with the guard and everything, or if it remains like this, with like with a cane sword kind of dealy, um, there might be an explanation for that. Like maybe that was the original form of it, and he decided to go back to that. If he can change his form and the sword grows with him, um, especially if Ethan is in fact Kitetsu or had something to do with Kitetsu, maybe he could change the form of his sword into whatever the hell he wants. You know, we're kind of playing footloose and fancy free here with the rules. Literal yokai have descended and are now doing weird magical shit, you know? Okay. The, let's look into the, uh, the characters, the kanji that make up the Katetsu Blades individually, because it is kind of, uh, it gives you a little bit of insight into their designs, alright? I remember way back in, uh, Logtown, when we first found out about the Katetsu Blades from Ippon Matsu, and, you know, Tashigi was there with her little handy little, uh, sword dictionary guidebook thing, and she's like, oh yes, it's the Katetsu Blades, right? I originally assumed, and this might might have been a thing with, like, the uh, translations or whatever version I was watching at the time, the 4Kids dub, I don't know. I always assumed, you know, comment if you did as well, that the same guy made all three swords. Like, this Katetsu dude, way back in the day, made the Shodai, Nidai, and Sandai. And they just got progressively weaker as they went. I always assumed because, like, you know, he got older, and the older he got, like, kind of like with um, uh, Kozaboro Shimosuke, who mentions by the end of his life, he was only able to make some dull blades, you know, nothing like his masterpiece, Enma, right? Okay, so uh, that wasn't the case, though. From what we learned later is that the, uh, the bladesmith Kitetsu 
made the Shodai, made the the original Katetsu blade. Kitetsu, the kanji used, is just the kanji for Oni or Devil or Ghost, and then the kanji for Piercer or to Strike or to Pierce, okay? So pay attention to that kanji specifically because that's going to pop in for each and every one of the Katetsus, uh, as in the name of the bladesmith that made them, okay? So obviously we have Shodai, first generation Demon Piercer, second generation, third generation, okay? The name of the bladesmith that made the first one was also Kitetsu, Demon Piercer, okay? Then, the person that made the Nidai Kitetsu came a few generations later. We don't know how much later, but considering it, let, let's say Ethan was around during the Void Century, let's say Kitetsu was as well, or if they are one and the same person, then the Shodai was made during the Void Century, so let's flash forward, I don't know, 400 years, okay, so that's about the halfway point between the Void Century and now, so like, 400 years ago, that's when the second generation Kitetsu, the Nidai, was made by Kotetsu. All right, so different kanji for this dude, all right? Kotetsu is the kanji for old, and the kanji for piercer, strike, old piercer. Now that gives us an idea there on who this could be. Kotetsu is clearly William from One Piece D&D that was somehow sent back in time at some point, became a bladesmith, and made the Nidai Kotetsu specifically and for the sole purpose for slicing down anybody over the age of 65. <laughs> You're collecting social security? Not anymore. <laughs> like, okay, no, but it, that's the kanji for it. Old Piercer. Just like Demon Piercer, okay? Just swapping it out. So that was the name of Kotetsu, all right? Then, flash forward a few more generations, we have Tenguyama Hitetsu. He Tetsu, all right, who made not just the uh, Sandai Kitetsu, but also Ame no Habakiri, which is the other sword that Odin had, and now currently Momonosuke uses Ame no Habakiri, okay? But uh, yeah, He Tetsu, the kanji for that word is He, as in the kanji for fly. It can also mean scatter, it can also mean to skip, as in skipping pages in a book. That would be the general idea, but typically fly is that, so that's He Tetsu. Now, for a while, everything kind of made sense. It kind of worked. And then we found out that Tengu Yama Hitetsu is actually not his real name. That is actually like a title because that character's real name is Sukiyaki Kozuki. Or Kazuki Sukiyaki, I should say, right? So that is Odin's father and the former, uh, not emperor, former uh, shogun of Wano. Wano never really had an emperor. I guess Kaido was the emperor, because, you know, in the old caste system, it was the emperor that had, like, you know, ceremonial power. Not really. It was the shogun that was in charge. But I guess Orochi was the shogun and Kaido was the emperor. So there it is. But anyway, yeah. So that's uh, Kazuki Sukiyaki, right? So we're assuming that's his real name. That's the name he was given by his parents when he was born. The family name Kozuki, first name Sukiyaki. Okay, well, where did Tengu Yama Hitetsu come from? Where was it? And it's clear, like, he didn't just pick that name out of nowhere, just like when he went deep cover. Because you could just say, oh, well, after uh, Orochi and Kaido took over, he had to hide himself, so he put on the, the, the Tengu mask, and he hid on the outskirts of the Kuri region in the Amagasa village, and he had to adopt a fake name, and he just came up with Tengu Yama Hitetsu. No, 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 no. That name itself is relevant, because it's a bladesmith's name that is tied into the family of great bladesmiths and Sukiyaki was not pretending to be a bladesmith just to you know be undercover so Orochi wouldn't find out about him he is legitimately a bladesmith he legitimately made the Sandai Kotetsu he made Ame no Habakiri which is an extremely it's an Owazumono grade sword for God's sakes it was one of the swords that sliced Kaido so Sukiyaki knows his shit when it comes to making a sword so I guess the only explanation with this, on top of being the royal family line of Wano, the Kozuki clan, they're also a family line of 
swordsmiths and damn good ones, it seems, right? So um, I guess Hitetsu was maybe the name he took when he became a great swordsmith or whoever taught him. I I'm not really sure. Does that mean Kotetsu, the guy that made the Nidai? That that's also a former uh, member of the Kozuki clan. Maybe they weren't necessarily always the Shogun of Wano, because not every single member of the Kozuki family is a Shogun. Uh, they're the royal family, but like, for example, if, let's say, Kozuki uh, Sukiyaki had, like, three children, right, they just had Odin, but let's say that Odin had two younger brothers. Well, in the line of succession, Odin would be the one to become the Shogun, and then the other two brothers, like, unless something happened to Odin, or if Odin didn't have any children or something like that, they would never sit on the throne. They would never be um, Shoguns, right? So, you know, it, maybe a former member of the Kozuki clan, or maybe a branch family, something like that, you know, on the la main line of succession way back in the day, made the Kotetsu, and then okay, that's fine enough, but then you go even further back and you reach the Shodai Kotetsu, and then you're like, okay, well, it is true that Ethan Baron V. Nus Juro, Nus Juro, that sounds like he originated from Wano, and his aesthetic has always been different from the rest of the Gorosei. The, the other four Gorosei always wear the suits and the ties, very Western apparel, and in the case with, you know, well, we call him Samurai Gandhi, but, you know, Ethan, very Eastern apparel in the way that he dresses and wields the sword and everything like that, right? Obviously, Gandhi was from India, and, you know, yeah, this is, you know, we're talking Wano, Edo period Japan and stuff like that, but there is a, a difference of outfit in order to note here, okay? Okay, so if you want to say he was from Wano, sure. If you want to say that he was the original Kotetsu that made the Shodai, okay, cool. Do you want to say he's related to the Kozuki clan or he was a Kozuki that was actually the Shogun at one point? We know some shit went down with the Kozuki clan back in the day. They closed off Wano and everything like that. We know that was a whole deal. We know that when Odin returned after going to Laugh Tale, he was like, we need to prepare Wano to open. I want to open it to the world. He didn't get that opportunity because of Kaido's machinations and Orochi screwing everything up. Uh, and then later on, Momonosuke was like, we need to open up Wano. Now, he opted not to do that for a reason at the end with, like, Zunisha and everything, but they were about ready to do it, I guess, you know? So... Odin wants to open up Wano, but there was a Kozuki clan member back in the day that was like, no, we need to close it off to the rest of the world. And the Kozuki clans hold true to that isolation for, you know, 800-something years. So, it's a question. We need to be introduced to who was the Kozuki clan shogun back during the Void Century. We're going to find that out, pre presumably, during, you know, the flashback we get. Uh, connections to Toki as well. Toki's uh, family name is Amatsuki, which it, it, one, it was used to be one of the Daimyo clans of Wano. So she was originally from Wano. Mm -hmm. So maybe the original Kozuki clan head tasked Toki with doing something. Uh, maybe Ethan was that person or knew that person or was the bladesmith. Maybe he was the royal bladesmith and he went... Well, actually, it, it adds a whole new context to this now because as Artur said in his video yesterday on the last chapter where he goes more into detail, and I would strongly recommend you go check that out because he actually knows Japanese, so he goes more into like the character of, the, of Mo and what that could indicate and everything like that, so I'll leave a card to Artur's video up here, but he goes into the fact of like, well, wait a second, hold on, uh, the kanji for Kitetsu is Demon Piercer, well, you know, Ethan kind of looks like a demon, they all do, they're all, all the Gorosei are demons, they're yokai, so is it like a sword that pierces demons, or is it like, at one point, Ethan was working in Wano as the Kitetsu bladesmith, and then when he transformed into a yokai, he made this thing, and he kept it. Like, it, he made it, so that's why he has it. And he's just lived for 800 years. In the context with the Sandai and the Nidai, probably not so much. They were probably made by mortals, like Sukiyaki's clearly a normal human. He's old, he ages like normal, and he'll eventually die. Uh, Kotetsu is dead, most likely. Um, but in the case with Ethan, it might be like, no, he was a yokai guy, and he actually endowed, embowed? He endowed um, this sword with, like, demon yokai eldritch magic or something, right? And that's where the original story of the Kotetsus came from, so... There's that, right? Um, at any rate, uh, 
I don't know, having the knee die would have been pretty handy right about now to have like an upgraded form of it. I don't know, but you know, it's 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 sitting on a nice shelf back at um I actually I don't know if he's still living in the mountains with Tama or if he moved back to the capital, uh Sukiyaki. I would imagine he would just he told Hiori and Momo that he was their grandpa, so I don't see any reason why he would live out in the woods. I think he would come back to the capital and get to resume his life of luxury in the time, so maybe the knee die is, is resting there. Um maybe it'll tie back into Yamato's story. I don't know. But anyway, yeah, uh, that's the stuff that happened last chapter. What do you feel about the Kotetsu Blade situation, the kanji, what it all means? How do you feel about Ethan's sword changing design if it was just an error on Oda's part or if this is actually going somewhere? Like, in the next chapter, we might have, like, him holding up the blade and he just... Shoomp, and then it turns back into the Shodai, like, this was the sword that I forged over eight centuries ago, oh, Zoro, you know, in the land of Wano, and it's like, what? Back when I was a member of the Kozuki clan, what? And I was the Shogun there, oh! <laughs> like, I mean, I don't know how any of this stuff fits together, but we'll see. Anyway, that's the video. Hope you all enjoyed, everybody. Uh, this is Teking and Whitebeard and Roger, both users of the Saijo Awazamono Grade Swords, and uh, Zoro, who will probably have one. If not, he upgrades his own by the end of the story. Later, everybody. Signing out.